What is up, YouTube? It's the Zero Prince, and I'm back once more, and I'm driving because I got to get out of here. Where is here, you say? Am I evacuating? Am I leaving? I'm not leaving. I'm not evacuating. Not from Myrtle Beach, not from the state, not from the county, not from any of that stuff. I'm actually leaving the beehives, and that's right. I'm a beekeeper now, but that... I'm telling you, it's a story for another day, and I'll, I, I will get to you on that story. That's where I'm driving from right now, so I'm out in the middle of the country. I'll show you guys what I did at the Beehives, actually, because though we're not evacuating right now, that's not what I'm actually doing at the moment. I was, in fact, preparing for Hurricane Matthew, which is currently threatening the entire southeastern coast, including the Carolinas, but certainly not limited to the Carolinas. Part of Myrtle Beach has been evacuated. That evacuation begins tomorrow afternoon after initially being set for this afternoon. Today, by the way, Wednesday, October the 5th, 2016. Matthew's on its way. It's doing lots of damage down in the islands and the, the prettier parts of the world. It's a little scary. It definitely is scary. We're watching the storm. Because we're not evacuating right now does not mean that we are not prepared to evacuate. Celia and I live in Zone C. We're roughly a mile from the ocean. We're making preparations. We're ready to go. We know where we're going. We have provisions. And those provisions are important whether you stay or whether you go. So we should be good. You never know with these kind of systems. But it is currently forecast, as of this morning at least, it was forecast to go in a favorable direction. Favorable to us at least. And actually favorable to, to most of the coast. It seemed as though it was going to skirt the coast and go out to sea. But time will tell. But I'm going to show you guys what I did at the bees to get them ready for the storm because we're very new beekeepers and we're just kind of winging it right now. We, uh, there's not much advice on how to handle the type of beehives that we use in a situation like this. Uh, the more common beehive that most of you have probably seen, you know, you're thinking like picking up the boxes, those are called Ling's Drop Hives. They are nothing like that and they are sort of top heavy. But anyways, we'll show you guys how we got that fastened down and stuff. We're taking the precautions to get ready, which I advise you to do. If you're in an area also that is under an evacuation order, you need to get the hell out of there. Like, it's not a joke. You gotta get out of there. The storm surge is no joke, and the reason for those coastal evacuations. We do still expect to see very strong winds, so that's why we were reinforcing the beehives. So we keep our hives about 35 minutes away at a friend's property. I'm on my way right now to go to the small town near here because it's not quite a coastal town. Try to see what kind of provisions they might have, and we might be able to procure. So, and I thank you for hanging on to watch the next portion, which is going to start in like one. Oh my God, it's there right now! Yeah, I said we'd take a look at what I was actually doing out at the bees, and this is part of what we were doing. We had feeders in one of the hives, and I just didn't want to run the risk of one of the hives getting bumped around and one of the feeders spilling, so moved that to a communal feeder. Here are the feeders. Probably see the hives in the distance there. We're gonna try this out. I've never fed them like this before, but we got feeders in there and they're sitting on top of a crate because there's water in there to hopefully keep the ants out. Same deal with cinnamon around there, should help keep the fire ants away. And then over here, that's for yellow jackets and wasps and hornets and that sort of stuff. Those are traps. This one has just bacon, water, and a little dish soap in the bottom. This one has some soda, dishwater, vinegar, and a banana peel. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with yellow jacket traps, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna see how these go. Now let me show you what we've done actually to the hives over there. Here's what I've done to our beehives. These are top bar style beehives, king and top bar that we made them tall. We're tall. They're at least four feet off the ground. Problem is they're a little top heavy. They're actually pretty sturdy if you just go up and push them. Let's give this a little shove here. Hopefully not angry these, these ladies. You know, it's pretty sturdy overall, but when we had I don't even remember what it was called. There was another tropical system coming through a couple of months ago or a month or so ago. I went to Lowe's, got some cinder blocks, got some rope, and devised this little system here. These, it's really basic. Cinder block, rope, stretched across, one on the other side. We're facing the entrances right now. I'll show you guys a little more of the hives someday soon. All the bees that have been coming in this morning, in this hive at least, have had their pollen sacks full. They actually seem a little agitated and I couldn't get the smoker lit, so. I think it's just best that I pack up and head home. But I thank you guys for watching. Save the bees from Matthew and from Zika sprayers and everything else that's endangering the bees. Of course, as soon as I walk away, I see bees going in with colorful little pollen packets. Nope, I don't think they're gonna go in with me standing here, but that's perfectly fine. I don't blame them. They don't know what kind of creature I am. Oh, there's one right there. 
they keep flying in with all their pollen packets, pouches, you see? Some of them are more colorful than others. Whatever. See y'all later.